Hey friends, today I have a swatch and review for Cirque's new Fantastical collection, which features five thermal shades and one iridescent flaky topper. These are inspired by psychedelia, mushrooms, and wavy lines, and while I love the colors and theme for this collection, I unfortunately had some issues with the formula, so let's just get into it. So the first shade is Mellow Yellow, which transitions from yellow when warm to orange when cold. My bottles are basically leaning towards the cold side. So maybe you noticed it in the intro, and if you didn't, you're probably noticing it right now, but most of these polishes just have a bunch of these little specks of pigment that weren't mixed completely, so you end up seeing some of that during application. I definitely think it's the most obvious with this shade. I actually asked Cirque about it after filming my swatches, and they suggested vigorously shaking the bottle and using three coats. But I ended up just doing two for this one because it actually gave me pretty great coverage, though you still could see those little specks here and there. Aside from that, I did like how bright and sunshiny this yellow is when it's in its warm state. The next shade is Wonderland, which is a green to teal blue thermal. So this one surprised me because it's super sheer. I think it's the most jelly out of all the formulas. And I don't think you could tell so much in the bottle, but as I was applying it, you could see that there are, again, more of those obvious specks of pigment that just weren't mixed all the way. And when this dries down, you can see it gives it a slightly bumpy texture. So while doing three coats did smooth out the specs for the most part, I feel like this one still wasn't 100% opaque. And for whatever reason, my camera was picking this up a lot more green than how I was actually seeing it. Maybe I was starting to run cold, but the teal was most noticeable here before I apply the second or third coat of polish. But yeah, I would just recommend checking out Cirque's website just to see how much these transition. But I'm curious to know what you think of the shade. So next up is Mushroom Kingdom, and if you think this is my favorite shade, you are absolutely right. <laughs> so this one transitions from red when cold to bright pink when warm. So again, my bottle is leaning more towards the cold end, but it's obviously not fully cold because it looks a little hot pink and not fully red. But aside from the gorgeous color, it had a super glossy, almost jellyish formula, but with much better coverage than the last shade, so I only needed two coats for this one. And the shade did have some specks of pigment in the bottle that I noticed afterwards, but I didn't really notice it as I was applying it or after it dried down, so... That's definitely good because, again, this one is just my favorite. I love the shades of pink and red that it transitions between. The next polish is Flower Power, which transitions from purple to a magenta pink. So this is a super jellyish warm tone purple that unfortunately had that unmixed pigment issue like the first two shades, although not as bad if that makes sense. I feel like it was noticeable but more after I applied it, but you can still see some specks here and there. So this one also had a thinner formula, so I did get some pooling near the sidewall and the tip of my nail, so it's not exactly self-leveling. Again, I really can't wait until Cirque switches over to the wide brushes because it would help with the application, especially for jelly polishes like this, so much better. Um, so yeah, I ended up doing two coats, but I think I should have done a third just because it still looks a little sheer here. The last thermal is Wavy Baby, which transitions from blue to violet, and I actually really love how indigo this one looks here. This one had another jelly formula that I thought maybe was too thin since I did notice some pooling again. Maybe I did just grab too much polish on the brush, but I just didn't find it to self-level as easily as some of the other shades. But anyway, once it dries down, you can see the more violet shade it transitions to, and I found this one to build up really nicely on two coats. So I absolutely love the two shades of this thermal, and I found it to be the most opaque of all of them. This is definitely my second favorite, but honestly, it's really close to tying for first. <laughs> this is also the only shade that I didn't see any specks of pigment. 
The last polish in the collection is Fantasia, an iridescent flaky topper. I'm showing this in one coat over Wavy Baby. It's really densely packed, so you don't need to fish for the glitters, but you might need to do some placement here and there. I originally was going to layer this over all the other thermals, but I wanted to actually compare it to other similar toppers that I have instead. The first polish that I thought of was Essie's Sparkle on top, which I've had for years, so it's half full, and I know it's hard to tell in the bottle, but this features bigger shards of flakes that I feel like look thicker, but it is pretty dense. I also have Loud Lacquer's Ninny Muggins, which is still iridescent, but isn't as similar because it features two different sized hex glitters instead of flakies, so they're just different shapes. And then the last polish that I have is Deco Miami Sea Glass, which is another flaky, but these are super fine and almost thin. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, but overall, it's the most subtle one, even on a dark base. So I'm starting with Fantasia over Mushroom Kingdom on my middle finger to serve as the control, I guess. Again, this one is super packed, so it gives me really great coverage without having to go back into the bottle. Then I'm using Essie Sparkle on top over Flower Power on my pointer finger. You can see how big and almost more jagged the flakies are in this one, but I do think you get good coverage on just one coat too. Then over Wonderland on my ring finger, I'm using Deco Miami Sea Glass, which is super hard to notice even over a dark colored base. You can see the flaky sort of twinkle as I move my fingers around, but this one has the least iridescent effect. I think this one definitely looks better with the more coats you add, unless you want a super subtle sparkle. And lastly, I'm showing Loud Lacquer's Ninny Muggins over Mellow Yellow on my pinky. So this one was a little bit less dense, but the main difference is obviously the shape where these are hex glitters and not flakies, but that pretty much concludes my little iridescent topper comparison. I honestly thought that some of these would be a lot more similar than they actually are, so I think I would vote for Fantasia as my favorite because it's densely packed and the flakies aren't too thin where you can't see them or too thick where they're kind of rough and jagged looking. But let me know which one you like the most. And that wraps up my swatch and review for Cirque's new Fantastical collection. So I did see a few other content creators on Instagram also mentioning the specs of pigment as well, but that it was only noticeable during application and not really in photos which I can pretty much agree with. If you do three coats and top coat, it's not going to look as bad as it is here in the bottle or even after the first coat where the base color is so sheer. But either way, the specs that you see don't make the polishes defective. They just give it a little bit of ugly bottle syndrome and, you know, might be noticeable on your nails where you definitely wouldn't have that issue with a fully opaque cream, for example. Cirque did also let me know that this could just be a first batch issue that might only pertain to content creators, so there is some hope that future batches won't have this issue at all. While these polishes are limited edition, I would personally recommend waiting to see some more reviews if you really want to avoid this unmixed pigment issue, but the warning there is, in case you missed it, Cirque is also increasing their prices. These thermals currently retail for $16.50, but you can get the full collection slightly discounted for $87.30. And to be completely honest, I have no idea if these are the new prices or if these will be increased even more. So as always, I would love to know what your thoughts are about this collection or the price increase leaving a comment down below so we can chat about it. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.